right, all right. Dirty broke in the building. What's going on, my G? Long time, long, long time coming for this one, huh? Hey, what's up with it? Yeah, man, it's been a minute. We've been trying to get it together. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, we 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 been rocking, we been rocking back and forth for for a little bit. Um, you do have a you do have a YouTube channel, which is what just Dirty Broke. That that's your YouTube channel. Yeah, Dirty Broke Two One Five. All right, Dirty Broke Two One Five. All right. So basically, I came across you. I believe you done a done an interview with uh with Guilty Seven One Eight about a year what was that, about two years ago. Um, I think I think so. I should. I'm not even sure how long ago that was. Yeah, that that was. A, yeah, yeah that, I know it's been at least a year. I knew that. Yeah, yeah that's been a good minute. And while on the yeah. while on the show, you were sharing some uh some good uh some good if not great information, man. So let's start at the beginning, man. So. Introduce mm-hmm. your, introduce yourself and let everybody know what you used to do before trucking. Uh, hell, this is all I ever done was trucking. <laughs> 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 this is it, man. I started driving at, uh, got my license at 18. Mm-hmm. That was back in 1990. So that's Dang. all I've been doing since 1990 was driving truck. That's it. So right, right, right out of, right out of school, right out of high school. Right, right out, right out of high school, man. So you go at so nineteen ninety? Nineteen ninety. Wait a minute, dirty broke. You nineteen ninety, bro, you graduated out of high school. You telling me that No, I, I grad no. Go, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. No, 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 no. I said uh no, nineteen nineteen ninety you got your, your license. How old was you when you yep. got your license? Eight, eighteen. Okay, so so in nineteen ninety you was you was eighteen. You're you younger than me? I'm 50. Bro, I ain't realize you was I ain't I was realize born, you I was, was, born, I was Yeah, I was born in 71. Wow, I I did not realize mm-hmm. you was younger than me, bro. No, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm 50 uh I'm 52, <laughs> born in 69, man. All right, well, you got me, man. You got me about 2 years. <laughs> Yeah, I did not. I did not hey, realize so you, 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 the, you, the, you, you the OG. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, you, nah, bro, you the OG because I, I didn't get my license until later in life, man. So at the, so at the age of eighteen, right, right after Rip, nineteen ninety uh-huh. was was that was that back then was was that class A or was that chauffeurs? No, that was still that was class A. I think that changed like a few years before that. I want to say mid to late eighties. I'm not sure exactly which year that changed. Somewhere around there. I'm not sure, but yeah, that was that was a CDL class A when I took mine. And just break to the barracks to take it too. I didn't go through school or nothing like that. All right, explain that to me. Just like pretty much like you do with it. Just like pretty much you do with a car. Mm -hmm. Went and got the book. Just like with a car. Went and got the book. Studied the book. And uh, when they had to take, you know, you got to go in and take your air brakes and all that, you know, get the permit, take your air brakes and all that. Right. And then uh, they take you out on a road test. Once you pass that, then they schedule you for a road test. You got to bring a truck and a trailer, combination, mm-hmm. you know, over 26,000 pounds. So you was able, so and that's what I did. So at the age of 18, you was able to do all of that. Was you already working for a trucking company to do that or you just got that on your well, own? Well, just a little bit of a little bit of a history here. I've always been around trucks. My dad, I come from, I'm a third generation truck driver. Mm-hmm. So I grew up driving trucks before I was old enough to drive trucks. So when I, when it was time for me to take the test, that was nothing. I already knew how to drive. Okay. Okay. It yep. was a matter of just going there to the barracks. My dad, he, he was a union guy for over 30 years. Mm-hmm. He just got a truck from the boss, from his boss. And he took me over there, took my test and that was it. Oh, that was all she wrote. So none of that. So that so none of this going to none of this spending five thousand, six thousand dollars going to I, school I stuff know. and 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 all like that. You you just went did the book. No 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 apps. Because yeah, we didn't have no apps. You, you no, really had to read. You had the book. to read the book and, and memorize <laughs> everything, huh? Hell yeah, yes sir. So what? So what do you? What do? You, what do you? In your opinion, man, what? What do you think uh, of today's? Uh, you know, everybody 
you know, with the apps, with the with the apps, with the younger generation that's coming into trucking now. What what do you how do you feel about things now versus things that you went through back in the day? Yeah, you know what? T T Mobile need to take that whole lie back, bro. They, they, they don't have <laughs> they over here talking about we got the best service and all like that, man. That's some bullshit. <laughs> That's some bullshit. I'm 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 on I'm on I sixty nine. I'm like I'm like in a very fucking good area, and I'm not getting service, uh -huh. man. That shit crazy. Did you hear? Yeah, I uh I got your number, man. When you when you text me, I don't. I got the four 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 zero, whatever whatever that error code is. Uh, the two you you got my main uh, number. You got my okay, name. Okay, that's, yeah, that's that's why when you when you text me, I'm like, who the heck is this? That's <laughs> the, that's the number I got for lockout, man. But all right. All right. So, did you hear any other did you hear any other questions that I said before? We no, I didn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah. you know, back in 1990, man, where you started, you know, with the new generation of truckers coming in right now, and what they gotta go through, they got the apps, they got the, you know, they got quote unquote gurus over here trying to trying to swing them, them out of their money. How 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 was it? How was it back then when you got your license? versus now when people get in their license i can't speak to what they doing now you know man it seems easier but like i said i already had it so i don't know but back then you, you really had to sit down and read the book and go through it you know but and i didn't go through all the i guess like the school and like like the young guys do today or older guys or whatever, you know how they do it today. Mm -hmm. Sit you in it, you know, send you to school, send you through the classroom sessions and all. I didn't do none of that. So I don't know what that's like. All right. Like when I, I listen to the different YouTubers talking about it and I kind of hear it from them, but I, I don't know nothing about that, bro. I got you. I got you. So when you first got your, all your endorsements off the first rip or you went back? No, I actually didn't. I went back and got my, my endorsements. I just had to, just the class A, just the combination. That was it. All right. So, got your license, eighteen. Who you mm -hmm. who, who who you was rocking out with back back then? My first driving job, I drove a trash truck for BFI. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that. They go back. They ain't in business no more. Yeah, the blue truck. That was like, yeah. Here you go, the blue and whites. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. BFI. That was my first job, driving a uh, a rear load trash truck. That was just a. Uh, you know, just a straight truck. That was it. Man, what what happened to that company, bro? And how long you uh, was with yeah, it? <laughs> to be honest, I was only with them for like three days. Oh, goddamn, bro. What <laughs> well, happened? Because well, when I well, I'm gonna tell you when when they told me I had to uh you know get out and help them, you know, load the trash into the truck, I was like, nah, this ain't for me. <laughs> 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 I said, nah, this is this ain't for me. So three days I was out of there. Uh, you said no, yeah. I'm only on for the driving part. Not, yeah, not that's that's a, yeah. And I didn't even go there to drive a real load trash truck. I went there. I wanted a uh, a roll off truck, mm -hmm. you know, or a front end load truck, you know, to kind of load the the dumpsters from the front. Right. Those were the two positions that I wanted. And it's like, yeah, you know how they these companies, yeah, 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 we'll get you in there, but you got to do this for now. So but I didn't know this for now meant helping throwing trash in the back of the truck. So the recruiter, what was it a recruiter that you talked nah, to? It was, or no, nah, it was it's oh. like here, just go over there, they'll give you a job. And oh. that was it. <laughs> oh, okay. You was like, yo, I want I want this, but no, nah, we're gonna have to put you in this. And exactly. And that three days, you you already yeah, that was, knew no, that I got out of there. there. Yep, I got out of there. So and then I then I applied for another place and got a job driving a roll off truck. Okay, now the roll off truck is like what the dumpster that rolls yep, off with the, the dumpster. Yep. Yeah, that rolls off the back. Yep. Oh, okay, how long you done that for? I done that. I done that for like four or five years or something like that. Okay. I'm not even sure exactly how long I done it, but I done that for a while. Okay. What was so some? That, that was cool. What was some? What was some of the driving jobs that uh that you had throughout the years that that you say that you, you know, that you like, well, I, the one you just said, you've been there for five years, so obviously you must like yeah, that. I, so. I, yeah, I actually did like that job. I thought that, to be honest with you, I thought that was probably, looking at it now, that was probably the most fun I had driving the truck is when I did that. Okay, okay. When I drove the uh, roll-off truck. Now, what were some of the companies that you would say was would be some of your challenges? Hmm. 
None, none of them really, because I didn't have to be honest, which I didn't have that many jobs. So that I had that job, and then I drove a, a triaxle dump truck after that, and then I went and bought my own truck after the triaxle dump truck. Okay, okay. So, so that was it. So after that, so you, so you was owner op for a little bit. Yeah, I actually was a fleet owner. All right, so I actually we actually own multiple trucks. So how what was your what was your journey into into being the fleet owner, and how was it, if I may ask, how difficult was it to keep, you know, to keep guys in your trucks? Very difficult. One of the hardest things I ever had to do was trying to manage grown men, mm. which wasn't my strong suit, and I didn't realize it until I was already doing it that it wasn't my strong suit. So you decide. So you decided. How, how old was you when you decided to, uh, you know, to get your to get your truck? Then, I and think when I. So it, it was the idea was just to buy the to buy the one truck, operate. No, nah, I no, nah, I had big dreams like most guys do. I wanted to be this big time fleet owner. <laughs> oh, so and you, I thought it was going to be easy. So you, so you were not. So let me ask you this, because there's, uh-huh. you know how you know how some of the people today. They can just, you know, they come, they can become lease on. I mean, um, not lease, but they can become fleet owners without necessarily owning the trucks. Did you go that route? Like you just, no, nah. you, you just lease. <laughs> nah, you I bought, actually brought nah, the truck. I actually bought, I actually bought the trucks, man. I didn't know nothing about this lease stuff and none of that. That just wasn't my world. All right. So you decided to go fleet owner. How many trucks you get at the at 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 the one point? And, uh, the most I had was 11. 11? Wow. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. So, bam. So, got 11 trucks. You need mm-hmm. 11, you need 11 trucks filled. Yep. How did you, how, how did you go by to try to get drivers? And how did you go by try to, you know, try to retain them? Well, most of the drivers I got, I already knew them from previous or, you know, just guys from the neighborhood, stuff like that, word of mouth. Yeah, my cousin, he could drive. All right, send him over, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Just pretty much word of mouth. Okay. Yeah, okay. But it was very hard to retain drivers because of the competition, which ultimately that's what put me out of business, for paying their drivers. I just couldn't afford it. You know what? It's, it's funny, and I talked about this a lot. You know, it's just unfortunate that you can't, that you can't find nobody to – again to see your vision and and to at least help you out to get you over that hump you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying you know you got a lot of you we, we got a lot of people we got a lot of drivers out here that says yeah i'm i'm for the minority owned business yeah i'd rather work for a minority owned uh company yeah i want to do this and yeah i want to do that but when you you know when you explain to them that you're a small business owner and you know you you trying to you trying to do right by them by at the same time trying to make a profit for yourself and you try to explain that you know explain that concept to them but they just they 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 just don't want to hear it. you know they just looking they you got some drivers that's that's looking at your pockets or you got some drivers that oh okay well you 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 giving me 45 cent a mile but i can go over to jb hunt and get and get 50 cent a mile that's uh-huh. that's what you was going through yeah pretty much pretty much because guys would leave you the guys would leave you for 50 cents more you know what I'm so that was it's hard to keep drivers when they'll leave you when they go get another opportunity for 50 cents more so did you, you have, know, it was did, crap. Did did you have any did you have any drivers that like really done you bad because you know there's there's drivers out there that's come in and oh yeah they feel some kind of way and then they'll take your oh, yeah. truck and leave oh, it yeah. across <laughs> oh what, yeah <laughs> what what were some horror stories you could share with us uh, not to get too personal but I had to go retrieve trucks from uh, not so cool places you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Now all my guys were local too, so just so you know, I didn't do we ne- I de- never done over the road. All these trucks was local. Mm-hmm. They went out, you know, back the same day. So I had to retrieve my truck from out of the projects and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> wow. Yeah, guys would go run 
personal errands with my trucks and all that kind of stuff. So. Wow. Did, did, yeah. did, did, it, it wasn't no time that you went to go pick up a truck without the wheels on there? No, no, I never had that. It was never that bad, but, you know, I just had to go get them. You know, no fuel in them and parked in some places they shouldn't have been. Wow. And they just, they, 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 they just jack laid you just like that without, without no warning or anything. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. Yeah. But they still wanted their last check though. Oh, oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> they, they, they still, they, they still called you up for that last check though. Right. Uh, absolutely. So when you had absolutely. to go, when you had to go and pick up, when you had to go and pick up these trucks, man, and these guys is, is over here harping you for their last paycheck. What, what, what did you have to, what did, what did you tell them? I mean, they, 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 they couldn't get their last paycheck because they, they abandoned the truck and you had to. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, yeah that's, to, that is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, you had to pay the, you know, you, you well, you, you yourself went to go get them, but you mm -hmm. still had to pay yourself to go get it, right? Right. When I had to go to retrieve a truck, I never had a problem with, with those guys trying to get their last check. They was just done. They already knew they was done, so it wasn't even no more rap after that. Wow. That's 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 messed up. Yeah. And it, it, so I never really had to go back and forth with a guy. Once I had to go get a truck, there wasn't no going back and forth with a guy about his his last check. I got you. I got you. So you said, unfortunately, you know, with the competition and everything that was coming into play, and it was getting a mm -hmm. little, uh, it was getting harder and harder for you to, you know, to maintain your company. Uh, how did you? How how did you? You know, uh, how did you settle out your company? So we just basically, uh, we just basically had a conversation with my wife, which was my business partner. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just told her this ain't working. We just ain't making no money. We're not making a profit, which is basically giving guys jobs with a lot of stress, a lot of headache and not really turning a profit. So at that point, we just decided to sell the equipment off. Okay. That, you, and being that you sold off the equipment, you pretty much had to sell it for half of what you got it for? Or what? Oh, yeah. Sometimes not even that because some of the equipment, you know, it was getting wore out anyway. But, you know, I had some some newer equipment, but most of the equipment was older trucks, twenty five, thirty thousand dollars trucks. It wasn't it wasn't like a, that big of a deal. But, you know, I just got what I could out of it. Actually, some of the, the a few of the trucks I sold it to drivers that work for me. Do you do you feel some kind of way about that? I mean, you know, that you that that you couldn't that that you couldn't you know go on and you know and 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 grow the company to to like a a a prime a a a, a snyder you you feel some kind of way about that i mean you know we we always look back sometimes most of us anyway we have regrets about you know should have would have could have and all that and and i done did that before so you know and mm -hmm. You know, a lot of it was my fault. I could have strategized different, but I was a young guy too, man. And I had, I didn't have anybody to really guide me in this industry, mm -hmm. like from a business standpoint. Like my father, he wasn't a businessman. He was just a truck driver. He just knew how to drive trucks. He taught me how to drive trucks. He didn't know anything about the business of owning owning trucks. So that was a, I was taking on a whole different dynamic that I knew nothing about me or my wife. So we just kind of threw ourselves into it trying to figure it out like you gotta remember we didn't have google back then you know what i'm saying yeah so yeah, we exactly. had to learn the hard way and when you learn the hard way it's gonna be very expensive you know what i'm saying yeah we we didn't have uh youtube yeah I, yeah i didn't have none of that i couldn't go watch the different youtubers how to do this and how to do that so it was none of that got you man so now as i mentioned before uh you you just say you just came out of the gate and just went on here and brought all your trucks uh -huh. but uh but you know like these guys now, you know, plus you, you had your CDL. So you was able to, you know, go and get your truck and, uh -huh. you know, retrieve your truck. These, mm -hmm. the, the guys that starting these quote unquote companies were out of CDL. How do you feel about that? That they try to start these companies were out of CDL. You, you, do you think they should at least get their CDL because, because they, they'll be able to do a little bit more, you know? Well, I don't know. You know what? I I, I think different now. Mm -hmm. Before, it was no hesitation. I would say, yeah, they should have their license. But now, looking at the way the industry is and things are, technology, so forth and such, it's like, now I'm thinking a little bit different now, man. <laughs>
Because it's I mean, because it's just business at the end of the day. Like most of these guys that own these mega fleets, they don't drive trucks. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's not it's not something that you have to do. I mean, if you can do it, I guess that makes you a little bit better. But I don't think it's something you have to do. All right. Do you still you know do do you still suggest that uh, that somebody with an ambition to you know to own a fleet to still to still follow their, you know, their dreams of owning a fleet? Do you, do you oh, suggest absolutely. To follow that? Uh, absolutely. I would encourage anybody to at least try. Because once you try it, then you won't have no more regrets. Okay. Of, man, I should have. You know what I'm saying? All right. That's what's up. All right. So oh, how, yeah. how, how long you been, uh, how, how long you been uh, driving fuel tankers? For going on 12 years now. All right. So, did you did you start that after you know after you know after your uh fleet business yep when i came to work here i still had one truck left i held on to it because i didn't quite know how this was going to work out i told my wife let me try this fuel tanker out because it <laughs> when i held on to my last truck i said i was going to try to lease my truck on to a company right but nobody would lease me on of course because i didn't have any experience you know what i'm saying Okay. So I said, well, let me, I told my wife, well, let me go work for this company here, which wasn't the first company I applied for. Loves wasn't. I applied for another company and they denied me because I didn't have experience Mm -hmm. with fuel tanker, you know, but anyway, so I said, well, let me try, let me see what's up over here. So I tried it and I liked it. So I said, well, I ain't going to sell the truck. Just let, let me just hang out here for a while and make sure to see how consistent it is. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be consistent. So I eventually sold, sold my last truck and I stayed here. So before you sold your last truck, you said you you just mentioned that nobody nobody wouldn't lease you on. No, because I didn't I didn't have any at that time. Nobody would take me on because I didn't have any experience. So what was I going to do? You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't know how to load. I didn't know how to unload. I didn't know anything. I'm doing without any experience. Well, you know now. Well, now they they they. It's they, different now. Yeah, it's different now. They they <laughs> just bring it on people. Just yeah, they it's bring a it lot on different. Now. Now. Absolutely. <laughs> wow! So it's totally different when I when I came into the industry of fuel hauling, it was totally different. Wow, man! All right, so yeah. so fuel hauling, man. Talk, to, you know, tell us, uh, you know, tell us for the people that's 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 not into. I mean, that's that don't know much about fuel hauling. What uh, what 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 did it all entails? Um, you know, it's a set schedule. It's very very regiment. So if you're not the kind of guy that wants to get up at the same time every day, pretty much five days a week, this is probably not going to work for you. Fuel hauling is very regiment. Mm -hmm. You know, you're pretty much going to do the same thing every day, particularly the kind of work I do. It's the same time. I wake up the same time, go to work the same time. I'm pretty much done the same time every day, like clockwork. So it's it's up to to you to when you go and – is your is your tanker is already pre fueled or you already no, or you, you have you, to fuel it? Yeah. We have to go fuel it. A typical day for me is I start at midnight. I get to work at midnight. Mm-hmm. I get in my truck, of course, to do my pre trip, and then I get onto the computer, log on duty, all that stuff, and then on our computer are our loads. Our loads tell us where we going, mm-hmm. what we're loading, and where it delivers to. And that's pretty much on the computer. They usually get, I usually do five loads a night, and you have to run them in order. So I usually it says one load of diesel picking up at such and such terminal, delivering to such and such store. Okay. That's pretty much my routine. So I get in there, figure out what I'm loading. I go to go load it, go to a loading terminal, load it, and then I go deliver it. And I do that all over again. So this, so it's like it's it's like one. It's and what do you mean by loads? It means that is one f- uh one fuel per trip. So once you get once you go and get the diesel, you you take it to the take it to the the store or to the to the fuel uh to to the truck stop. You empty that out mm-hmm. the the entire tank. Entire tank. And then after that, you go back to the DC and reload for another. You got it. You got it. And you say you 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 do five loads a night? Yep. Five loads a night. That's an average night. Sometimes six, but usually five loads. Wow. Five loads is an average night for me. Wow. And that will, that will vary depending on where you live at, location, how far stores are. 
because I do slip seat. So I only have the truck for uh, 12 hours and I got to be out because I slip seat with another driver and she, she jumps in, I jump out. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. So where, so where, 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 where are you from D? I'm, I'm out of, I'm originally out of Philadelphia. Okay. Okay. So that's where yeah, out of Philly. That's, that's where, so you do, so you basically do the Northeast. Yeah, I'm in the Northeast, yeah. And I don't live in Philly now, but I'm out of the Harrisburg area now, but that's where I'm from, Philly. Okay, okay. So but you mm -hmm. still you you still out of that DC though, right? You you just don't live in Philadelphia. Correct. Oh, okay, okay. So do you do you get paid by the load or do you get paid by the or do you get paid by the mile? Do you get paid salary? We get paid hourly. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's a hourly pay. Um which is pretty cool. I didn't think I was going to like it because they just started that earlier in this year. They started that because we used to, it used to be all load pay. Then they changed us over to hourly pay. So, all right. So you say they just changed that this year because you say, yeah, you've been with year, them. So, mm -hmm. so you've been with them for over 12 years. So or going on 12 years. All right. So mm -hmm. I'll just say, I'll just say 10. So the 10 mm -hmm. years, it was all load pay. How, how all, was, lo all load pay. How, yep. How was that? How how was that? How's that break it? How's that broken down? Uh, it, it varies on the load. Where where are you picking it up from and where it delivers to? The load pay the loads. They were pre predetermined on how much they were depending on, like I said, where you picked it up from and where it went to. So so, so like a load on average would probably be like in between fifty and sixty bucks a load, something like that. Okay. 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 And you were still, and you were still rocking what five loads? So at fifty yeah, bucks, yeah, five loads, yeah. What is it, and 50 and that's and that's, a, that's like a low end, fifty bucks. So sometimes the load could be upward to eighty five dollars, depending. Oh. Like I said, depending on where we picked it up from and where I delivered to. All right. So now, mm -hmm. but they they change all of that to now salary base or hourly, or hourly, oh, base. hourly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh. So what's the so what's the average what's the average rate now what's the average so, rate that uh because you you should be capped right about now right because you no I, I no I actually don't I'm I'm actually not even capped yet but <laughs> I think we go all the way out to twenty years to get capped but anyway for a new guy coming in they start you and it's dependent on area this will vary from area to area. So in this area of Pennsylvania, for fuel haulers, they start you at twenty-seven dollars an hour. Okay. On the DEF division over here, where I'm at, they start you at with thirty dollars an hour. Oh. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Why the DEF is 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 more? Well, and here's the thing: DEF is more only because they have a hard time filling those positions. Okay. Because a lot of people just not familiar with doing that kind of work. Okay, okay, okay. DEF you know what I mean? okay, right. DEF thirty and fuel is uh twenty seven. It's twenty seven. But yep. that's that's still a good paycheck a week though, right? Uh huh. So, yep. All right. And what's that and being that it's hourly, you you, you just mentioned twelve hours. So mm -hmm. that's that's that should include some overtime, right? Yeah, well you gonna you're gonna pretty much get overtime. Um because we do twelve hour shifts, you get paid Straight time for 40 hours. You get time and a half after 40 hours. Okay. Okay. So uh, usually guys out here get anywhere on average where I'm at and anywhere from 15 to 20 hours of overtime a week. Wow. On average. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, but, you know, anywhere from 15 to 20 hours. Man, that's that sounds like a good pay. You know, because you got to figure, you got to figure 12 hours a day, 12 fives is 60. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's 20 hours right there. Wow, that's that sounds like a good paycheck, my G. Yeah. So most most guys out here do do pretty good. All right, all right. So so driving the fuel tanker is is a lot of regimen. You you have to get up. You have to you have to put the the holes on and and all that other good stuff. Uh huh. How, how much how much regiment work it entails? It's real regiment. It seems like a lot when you first start it, but a week after doing it, two weeks after doing it, is you can pretty much do it with your eyes closed. But it, it's very regiment. You do the same thing over and over and over again. So you could pretty much get a work a workout. It's really not, not really because most of your time, to be quite honest, you're just standing there 
watching a product unload or watching a product be loaded. Right. You hook up, we pretty much just hook up two hoses and you sit there and wait for, you know, 15 minutes or so to uh, unload. So the unloading process is like 15 minutes to load a tanker is anywhere from, tw- uh, from 10 to 12 minutes to load it. Okay. Okay. So and then, through- you know, you just, you just basically standing there <laughs> is all you do. So throughout your it's years, not really oh. no physical work, really. So throughout your years in trucking, man, have you have you came across any 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 issues in your years of trucking? Uh, as far as what, like uh, being involved or just seeing or, or what accidents and stuff like that? Yeah, have or you what? have you have you uh, have you been involved with an accident? Have you you know have you seen an accident that probably turned you know that kind of like made you think, wow, why did I get into this? <laughs> no, nah, no. Nah, believe it or not, and man, man, another guy was just talking about this. All the years I've been out here, I've never actually seen a bad truck wreck happen. Mm-hmm. I never, I always came upon it after the wreck, mm-hmm. you know. But I never actually seen a, you know, a major c- crash happen in front of me. I never seen that. No. All right. Or I never, I've never been involved in one. So you, uh, so you, 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 pretty cool as far as you know doing, you know, being the truck driver out here. Have you came in? Have you came in any precarious situations like you're at a, you're at a truck stop and you know somebody come up there to bother you or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, that that happens a lot because I deliver to truck stops, so I deliver to the love. So, you know, you always get people walking up, smoking cigarettes, all that kind of stuff. Just want to ask you questions, stuff like. That. No, not really, no. All right, all right. That's what's yeah, up. Nobody, what's nobody, up. nobody, pretty much bothered. You know what I'm saying? People right. are just sometimes they're just curious. They just want to know what's going on, how we do what we do, and what kind of money we make, and that's pretty much it. Are they hiring? That kind of stuff. All right, that's what's up. Dirty broke man. Thank you, thank uh-huh. you. No I, problem. I do appreciate the conversation, man. I'm enjoying myself right now, bro. Yeah, man. I'm glad we got this done, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So before you get on up out of here, because I know you're a uh-huh. busy guy, and again, thank you for your time, man. Um, no problem. You, I got you know a few questions here. Why? Yeah. Why do you think truck drivers don't get no respect today? <laughs> To be honest, man, I think a lot of truck drivers make it that way, mm-hmm. you know, just by not all, but, you know, a lot of them, you see them, I see them, how they carry themselves, throw, you know, shit bags out in the parking lot, trash, pissing this and that, just mm-hmm. that kind of stuff right there. You know what I'm saying? So. Wow. That's, that, 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 that's a good answer for that, man, because like I said, it's, it's crazy that you know, how, how they treat, how they get mad about, you know, being treated at the truck stops, like, uh-huh. like, lo- uh, not loves, but like petrol, uh, petrol pilots, flying J's and, and, and TAs where we had to pay for parking. And a lot of people feel that, oh man, we, we shouldn't be paying for parking and yada, yada, yada. But look, uh-huh. at, but look at how you treat the parking lot. You know, yeah. no, nobody don't yeah. want to come out there and clean up your shit for free. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because I never I, and I never even thought about it until I actually start working here to kind of see it firsthand or what goes on. Like you know, they got to pay people to clean that up. You know right, exactly. <laughs> so, like, so don't yeah, get yeah. so don't get mad when they turn around and be like, "Well, well we got to pay for parking." You throw out, <laughs> you know. Uh-huh. So yeah. that's what's up. Have throughout your years in driving, man, and and it only sounds like you only been with a few places. But have you been? Yeah, that was it. Yeah. But have you ever been to, been to any places? that you was fired from no nah, nope all right all right Never what, fired. Nope. all right so for the trucking company that you drive for what is one of the biggest misconceptions about hauling for the for the company you 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 haul for um it's hard people think it's hard okay that's probably the biggest misconception like People that haven't n- never done this kind of work feel, hard. oh, man, it's hard as that. The slosh, you get a lot of slosh. And to be quite honest with you, lockout, the slosh is like zero when you're hauling uh, gasoline tankers. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're hauling a smooth board tank, of course, you're going to get the slosh. But our tankers are baffled off. They're sectioned off. So you don't get any. It's just like pulling a dry van. Like you, don't, you can't even really tell it's liquid back there because you don't get any sloshing. Okay. So that's that's like a misconception. You know All right. Uh in your opinion, brother man, what is wrong with trucking today? Um 
<laughs> uh, it's probably a lot wrong with it, man. It's overregulated, I think, in my opinion. Um, I think that's probably the biggest thing that I got on. It's just the regulations, the ELDs, the whole nine, being told when to rest, all that kind of stuff. Okay. okay. I think, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, you got a big issue with that. Have you have you been OTR? Never. So all 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 it was is straight local for you. Always local. Yep. All right. So this, I never spent one night in a truck. Never. Okay. So this question will be a. Uh, I'll flip this question. Being that you've been in trucking, and I see that trucking has has given you the success that uh that 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 you deserve throughout you know throughout your years in trucking. What have some of the sites and, you know, what have some of the sites that you was able to, you know, see, you know, that trucking provided for you? Like, have you went to Las Vegas? Have you went to the Grand Canyon? You know, what, what, well, have, in, in what have you? Well, no, not in the truck. You know, the, you oh, say just, you never did in the truck. Oh, so I just no, flipped. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. No, well, shit, man. We've been all over. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, yeah, we travel pretty much. I mean. Oh, I mean, we travel to a lot of places, man. A lot of places. Been outside the country. <laughs> okay. And uh, actually, I'm looking forward to doing that next year coming. Okay. So, getting back to travel some more. Yeah. Yeah, because so we, we've been Co around. COVID pretty much messed you up last year. Pretty much. A absolutely. Absolutely. How, how did it affect? How how did it affect the uh, the company? Uh, <laughs> it's funny you say that, man. I I didn't miss not one day of work. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't miss not one that work, and I say I used to say this jokingly, but I'm kind of it's, it's kind of a lot of seriousness to go along with it. This is one of the what I do hauling fuel, 1993. That's that's a fuel placard. Mm -hmm. Is the most consistent freight out there, and the reason why I say that is, I go the same time every day. It's done the same time every day, consistently, for 12 years. With no layoffs. Okay, that's what's now. Up. And if somebody know any more freight more consistent than that, not that, not that. Yeah, well, my homeboy do this, and I can know that's something that you personally done. Let me know, because this is the most consistent freight that I ever done. Okay. Where it's the same time every day, like clockwork. I, we don't have to look for loads, none of that. The loads are there. That's what's and up. You don't. We don't have to check into a shipper. We don't have to check into a receiver. And I say this jokingly too, but it's the truth. We're the we're the we're the we're the we're the shipper, we're the receiver, and we're the carrier. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is I transport it, which makes me the carrier. The shipper, I load it myself, the receiver, I deliver it myself. Like I don't need anybody's help. I don't have to check in with anybody. Like I could go to work and I don't have to talk to nobody. Which is the good part about doing what I do. I don't have to talk to anybody. That's what's up. That's I don't have to wait for anybody. It's no more than a high and buy, and that's it. <laughs> I buy. And no get on. waiting, no waiting to get checked in, waiting for doing none of that. I got you. I got you. None of this. You just go do your own thing. Yeah. None, none of this drive-in reefer shit that we go through, huh? No, it's totally different. A lot of my guys, like you and a couple of other guys, that's what they do, and I, I don't experience any of that. That's what's up. So I tell people, like, if you don't, if you get, if you're tired of shippers and receivers, get us a try. Cause you won't you won't deal with that no more. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. But you got <laughs> you gotta, gotta have do. you gotta have your hazmat and tankers though. That's, yes, that's you gotta have up. your hazmat and your tanker. You definitely gotta have that. All right, all right. Dirty broke. How 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 can the people get 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 with you, man? Hey, just come on over to the channel, hang out with us. We do a little YouTube channel called the Truckers Lounge over there at Dirty Broke Two One Five. We usually do it once a week. So, all right, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. Dirty Broke, thank you for coming on, man. Appreciate it. I really do appreciate you, bro. And uh, you know, next time we get a topic or something like that, you know, let's let's get back together again. All right, no problem, man. All right, man. Take it easy, sir. All right, all right be easy. All right, peace.